Hey, it's Brittany. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are sewing the Necessary Clutch Wallet. It is a pattern from Emmeline Bags. It's one of my favorite things to make. I have I've made a lot of these. I started out making them on my domestic machine before I had an industrial. Um, I did do this video in two parts. So yesterday I uploaded the cutting and interfacing portion and then today is the sewing. Um, I love this pattern. So my flap fabric, I actually sublimated on my own and then this vinyl is amazing and it is being released Saturday, October 15th on the Mormino website. And there are some other colors too. So I like using a turn lock and I like adding a wristlet to mine. Uh, hopefully you can see we've got black waterproof canvas inside for our card slots and the interior. And then we modified the pattern to have two zippers. The original pattern only has one zipper. So that's what the inside of my pockets look like. Um, in the pattern, it has you sew right here, but we used rivets. Um, I do change the positioning for this from the pattern. I like having more space. In the pattern, it has you put it down lower and the flap comes down more, but there's, there's not as much wiggle room uh, for once you've got like a bunch of stuff in here. You can put a phone in here. Um, I haven't carried an NCW for a little while. I've been carrying some other wallets and I guess my phone has gotten bigger since then since I got a new one, but I'm pretty sure it still fits in here. Um, so you have 12 card slots, six on each side, two slots for money, your two zipper pockets if you choose to make it that way. And then you also have these three spots to put whatever you want in. I absolutely love this pattern. I hope you enjoyed my video. Um, if you haven't watched the cutting and interfacing portion, you can do that. It's the video that's uploaded before this one. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoy. Please comment, like, subscribe, like, and subscribe. Let me know um, if you've made an NCW, if you have any other tips or tricks that you use. Um, I did link in my cutting video, I learned a lot of how I make this pattern from Kittenish Behavior. I'll link her channel again. Lauren marina has got a great tutorial. She's got a couple of them. And then there's some other good ones too, but I'm kind of blanking on them. But anyways, thank you. Hope you like it. Have a great day. All right, let's get to sewing. So I have my bin of all my pieces that we cut in the last video. I grabbed some scissors. I have, sorry, this screwdriver. And I will link this, it's the best thing ever. I wound, I have two bobbins. One isn't full, but I usually find this is like a just over one bobbin um, project. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to sew my flap pieces first. So, here are two flap pieces. You're just going to take them and put them right sides together. And clip them together. Um, so I said I like this curved flap better than the one that kind of like bumps out. Also, this, this shape is easier to sew if you're not used to sewing around. Um, we're going to do one fourth of an inch around here. You could go through and draw a line if you wanted even. And I'm going to do a four for my stitch length. You are not sewing this part, but you're going to back stitch at the start and the stop. I have not gotten to use this machine <laughs> lately. So, kind of like, ah. Uh, 
been sewing cat toys on my other juki. And when you pivot, you want the needle to be coming back up, but not out of the fabric. Now, I'm going to take my pinking shears and cut the curve. You could take and notch it if you don't have pinking shears, but it definitely does help give it a better curve. And then you want to make sure that the corner is clipped in too. You can leave the sides alone. I'm going to flip this right side out. Um, so in my cutting video, I was talking about the different interfacings you can use. Um, I used to take and put a piece of Peltex into this before I top stitched. Um, I did like the stability it gave, but it was kind of a pain when you're doing like a lot of these. Sometimes I do make a lot of them. Um, so this has deck of a light on one side and uh, just a woven interfacing on the other. I would maybe beef it up a little bit, but it's not bad. I need this corner. You definitely want to make sure that your corners are poked out. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to flatten this down and clip it. And then I'm going to take it over to my ironing board and press it before I top stitch. So I've got our curve. And it's, it's decent. It's not flimsy, but I mean, it, it, it could be a little bit sturdier. But like I said, I'm going to go press this. I pressed this. I do apologize. I'm not going to go back and forth with the videos um, today because moving the whole phone mount is a huge chore. I'm going to get a second mount though, so I'll be able to. All right, now we're just going to top stitch the flap. I like to start here and just go around. You do not have to close this. If you're using a magnetic snap, you're going to want to leave this open so that you can put your snap in. But I'm using a turn lock so I don't have to access the inside. Um, I'm going to do a four and a half for my stitch length. Get this lined up. This is my first time sewing with the fabric I've sublimated other than some peekaboos. So I'm interested to see how it does in different like applications. I did order 10 yards of another fabric I can sublimate on. So I'm going to test that out and hopefully it works well and I will be able to do a video on sublimating. Okay, so this is my front of my flap because the print is this direction and then when you open the wallet, voila. Um, I'm gonna wait to put the hardware on. We have the flap done. I'm going to work on the zipper pockets. I apologize if I bounce around a little bit 
Um, I know uh, it's not completely ideal, but uh, the bear with me here. <laughs> uh, so, put all that back in there. We have two zippers. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight zipper tabs. We have four pocket lining pieces. And then we have two eight by four pieces and two eight by three and three fourth pieces. I forgot that I needed to trim these. So I'm going to, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to trim the um, leftover interfacing, like the overhang off of this real quick before I start. So now I have any overhang off. These are my two eight by four pieces and these are my two eight by three and three fourths pieces. The eight by fours we're going to take so that the prints are in the opposite direction with the top of each print on the outside. We're going to put them right sides together and then we're going to clip this side together. So you want it so when this piece is standing up in the wallet, everything is right sides up. So this is the side we are sewing. I'm just going to put a couple clips on here so it's straight. And then this is one fourth of an inch seam allowance. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say all the seam allowances because you should purchase the pattern, but this is a change. You could press this open if you want to. I'm just gonna give it a little finger press. So normally you'd have this piece and then these two if this wasn't directional. So um, if it wasn't, if your, if your print wasn't directional, you wouldn't have had to cut this and splice this. So instead of it being two eight by four inch pieces, you would have one eight by seven and a half. Pretty sure that's right. <laughs> we need to make our zippers now. You need, so you've got this eight inches. You essentially need your zipper to be the eight inches plus tabs. You definitely want the zipper tabs keeps the zipper out of your seams. So you're going to have six inches worth of zipper showing and essentially one inch of um, your zipper tab on each side. What I like to do is I take a pen and I think you should be able to see this. Yes, yes you can. All right. Uh, before the metal stopper, I'll just take and mark um, on each side even, so it's going to be straight. And then I'm going to go 10 to 16 here. Now you would want six inches showing, but on each side we're going to have a one fourth of an inch seam allowance for where we're going to be sewing. So I'm going to go from 10 to six and a half. And I'm going to make a mark here and then I'm going to turn it again so that I can make sure this is going to be straight. So again, I'm just using the line here to keep this straight. So I'm making a mark and then I'm making another mark six and a half inches down and I am transferring that. So we've got six and a half inches on both of these. Now the reason I did the six and a half again is so that we can mark exactly where we're going to layer fabric. So you want two pieces of your zipper tabs making a sandwich with your zipper so that the right sides are facing your zipper. And then I just like to put two little clippies there. Again, making a little sandwich. Uh, 
Okay. Now, you definitely want to make sure your zipper is inside. So I'm going to pull this down. And because I made these marks on both sides, I can keep it lined up. And that helps too if you cross them over down here. And then I'm just going to hold this there. Because you want to keep the zipper as close together as possible so that you don't have a gap. I'm making my sandwich again. And do the same on this one. Move the zipper. There are a few things worse. <laughs> Than doing a zipper and realizing the zipper pull is not in your zipper anymore. <laughs> and it happens to everyone. If it hasn't happened to you yet, be prepared. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take these over to my other machine because this one's a little intense for, for what's going on here. But I'm going to sew... From the edge of the fabric, because that's where our lines are, a fourth of an inch in on each of these ends, and then I'll be right back. So I, again, sewed each of the zipper tabs on at a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to trim these apart. And I'm going to take... and cut off my excess zipper on each end. Oh my gosh. I got my pinking shears stuck. They're like... Oh! The zipper... Okay, I got it. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I'll have to wait until my boyfriend can, like, unstick these for me. What the heck is going on? I've never had this problem. I think they're, I think they're getting dull. That or, it's probably the fact that I cut the metal zipper shop. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> okay, so now you're going to take and fold these out. And you're going to top stitch, which I do move back to this machine for now that there's a little bit more layer. You can move your zipper pull up a little if you want to. And I just kind of pull gently on it. So... Same thing with the other zipper. And if this doesn't all line up and it's wider, that's okay. We're going to trim it. You don't want to butt the zipper um, pull all the way up, though. Just to keep it away from your presser foot. Okay. So... Trim these apart. Okay. Now we're going to trim these down. So I'm just going to take my scissors and keep them straight along the zipper. And if this looks a little funny, it, it's okay, I promise. <laughs> It'll... It'll work out. And then where this is, you can, if you can tell, it's kind of wider. I'm still just trying to stay on the edge. These don't have to be perfect, perfect, but just be as precise as you can. Alright, so now we've got our zippers. Everything 
is ready for the zipper pockets. Uh, you can kind of decide, so when the wallet's open, this is the very center. And if you like one of the sides better than the other, you can make that the one that you'll see in. Because this one you kind of don't see unless you're like looking in, in the wallet. So I'm going to make this my top. I always make sure that my zippers are closing to the left. It's the way, it's just the way I do all of mine. Um, so you're going to take this piece, your biggest piece, and you're going to put your zipper face down on it and then you're going to center it. You could mark the centers if you want. I tend to eyeball it. And then you're going to want to clip it all together. Also, I forgot to mention, if you can hear my printer, I'm sorry, I have to have it going non-stop because I am printing transfers for my next wholesale order and I have to print almost 900 13 by 19 inch pages. <laughs> so it's going to be running. It's pretty quiet though, so I don't, I don't know if you can. All right, so I'm clipping this on. And then you could baste this on if you would like. I'm going to go ahead and just put my next piece down. So this is going to hang over, but I'm going to line up my li uh, pocket lining piece with the edge of my exterior pocket piece. And then I'm just going to go to this end and do the same. And clip it all together. I'm going to move my zipper right now because it's at the end that I'm going to start sewing. And then make sure this is all lined up. If you have a zipper foot for your machine, it would probably be beneficial to use it right here. I don't have one. Um, make sure your needle's down when you lift your foot to move your zipper. And as always, make sure you back stitch at the start and the stop. Okay, so I'm going to just take this and fold it down and clip it so it's out of my way. You could press this piece right now if you want to, but I'm trying to do that as little as possible. Okay, so another note, when this is standing up in your wallet, whatever piece is on this side is another piece you're going to see instantly. So if you have a favorite out of your two smaller pieces, you could use it. I'm going to use this one because this one is somewhat similar to that one, so I want it on the back of that. So I'm going to set this one aside, the one that I want here, because we're still working on this zipper. And then you're going to put this right sides together to this, and you want to make sure that it's facing up to the zipper. I'm going to line it up. It kind of helps if you flip it and line it so it's right there with the other piece. You could also trim your zipper tabs to this after you sew that if, if that helps you too. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I just wait. Again, you can base this if you would like. I'm just going to go ahead and put my lining piece right on.
Okay, my zipper pull is down here, so I'm just going to go ahead and start. I think I might have just heard a delivery truck in. If it's the delivery I'm waiting on, I might get to add something else to this wallet. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this, zip this back up, and clip these together to keep them on my way again. Okay, so right here is already half of our zipper pocket. So I'm gonna flip this over, and then we want the zipper pulls on the same ends. And we're going to do the same thing we did on the other side. I'm going to eyeball center this and clip it on. And then you can baste it if you want. I'm gonna put my lining piece on. Um, I have before taken a woven label and put it into here and then when I top stitched, I folded it down and top stitched it. It looked cute there. If you don't have any other type of like branding to put on, uh, that is an idea. Okay, remember, always have your needle down when you lift the foot to move your zipper pull. My zipper shifted a little bit. okay though. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to fold this back here, clip it so it's out of my way. This uh, material I sublimated on is slightly stiff too, so if you're using wovens, it's a little bit easier. Okay, so again, when we do this last piece, we want the top of our print um, against the zipper. I'm just going to line that up like I did the other side. lining piece on. Paste it if you would like. I'm going to move the zipper pull since it's on that end there so I can get started. Um, again, you can iron as you go if that's better for you. Okay, so now I'm going to take this to my iron and it is a little bit tricky because you want to make sure you get these zipper lining pieces completely out of the way 
and fold it down so when you top stitch you're not you're not going to be catching anything um i like to kind of pull it like this get it real flat it's gonna be interesting using this fabric i haven't had to really iron it yet so i just kind of press it a bit flatten it down I, I, I hit the iron with both sides, so I'll turn it over and then I'll go back and I'll kind of do that a couple of times just to make sure everything is completely nice and flat. Okay. So I pressed this. Um, this material is a little interesting. Um, I did go ahead and press this seam open and then, like I said, I pressed from both sides um, it's a little bit stiff, so what I'm going to do, and you could do this too, it might help. I'm going to clip everything open, and I'm hoping this helps. It should. I don't see why it wouldn't. just to make sure everything's out of the way and I'll still kind of hold on to it a little when I stitch as well. So from the top I'm going to top stitch these four lines on each side of my zipper making sure that I'm not catching the lining. Oh, and I went and checked my, uh, my delivery was my cat litter. <laughs> so, not what I was hoping to use for this. must have been in a little bit there. Okay. Just to make sure we've got everything flat. We caught everything that we were supposed to and nothing that we weren't supposed to. I'm going to do the same thing on this zipper. And take your time to make sure that you're not catching anything because it's going to um, save you a lot more time to, you know, go slow and check than it is to seam rip. Okay, I'm going to take these clips off of this. Oops. <laughs> I'm going to open my zippers just a little bit so they're in the middle and out of my way because now we're going to be sewing this together. So I'm going to take one side and I'm going to match them up. Here, I'm going to trim these zipper tabs down first, just so I can show you better what I'm doing. Usually I kind of wait until I sew this next step. There's no right or wrong time for that. Okay. So you're going to take the exterior pieces, put them right sides together, and you want to line up where you, the, these pieces right here and here, you're lining these up. And you're folding the zipper tab into the lining. Very important. So I'm lining those up. And clipping 
these pieces together and then I'm lining the lining pieces up and I'm clipping them together as well and I'm kind of giving this a tug right here and pinching to clip that right there so again right sides together I'm lining these up and you can kind of feel to line them up as well and then lining up the lining putting a clip here and then pulling a tiny bit to clip right here and do the same thing to this side make sure you put the zipper tab in the lining part Okay, so in the pattern, it tell you, well, okay, we changed this, so it's different than the pattern, but you're going to sew on the outside pieces. You don't have to sew your zipper lining pieces together, but I'm going to be real honest, I started doing it. I started going up a little bit, so I do like one fourth of an inch seam allowance on these pieces and then like a half inch on these so that they're out of the way. The way the pattern is written for the zipper lining pe pocket piece, it folds in and you catch it on the final sew for the pattern, but every once in a while it doesn't catch. So I just like doing it this way to ensure that there's never gonna be a hole in my zipper pocket lining. And you can comp completely close this up because you can flip it with this. I'm going to sew this part on my other machine because these uninterfaced pieces are too thin for this machine. So I'm going to go do that real quick and then I'll be right back. And so this, um, something else I failed to mention is when you get down here, you kind of want to take your seam allowance out further so that you can trim this off and it kind of keeps it out of the bulk. So I'm going to go through and trim this all my lining down. I'm not going to mess with this part. You could also cut your zipper pocket lining pieces to like eight by three and three fourths instead of eight by four if you wanted to just go around with the seam seam allowance on everything. But I like to make things difficult for myself. <laughs> I also did not sew that piece straight home. Look at that. It's going to be on the inside of the wall. It's okay. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so now we can flip this all right side out. my regular scissors to poke corners out. This material is this is interesting. I don't like I don't hate it. I'm hoping what I ordered I like better though. So I'm just poking these out to make them as flat as possible. If you have sharp scissors, this wouldn't be a good idea. Okay, so these pocket linings are kind of bunched up in there. You just want to give them 
a gentle tug down. If you pull too hard on them, it's going to pull that zipper tab in and we want them to stay up right. If we wouldn't have cut that down, it would go all the way to this seam. Um, and then, so like the final step, we're going to be sewing a box around here and that's what holds the whole wallet together. Um, and then you would have to catch the lining, but every once in a while, if you don't have it pushed down all the way, it, it just doesn't catch this way. It for sure is going to be closed. I like doing it this way. It has not failed me yet. And I kind of just make sure that it's smoothed down as well. Okay. You can press this if you want. I don't, I don't think I need to with this fabric, but that is our little zipper pocket. It is done. You should have, when you fold it, everything should be even. All right. I'm going to set this to the side. I'm going to work on my strap now. Like I said, I'm sorry if I bounce around. So we have a three inch wide strap and I'm going to mark it at one and a half inches. Okay, you probably can't see that, but thankfully I can. You can put um, double-sided tape here if you'd like to hold it together. Um, my machine gets a little upset when I use it, so I'm not going to. But I'm gonna fold in each edge almost to the line. Oh, I love this vinyl. As a reminder, which I'm sure I said it already, probably in my intro that I'm gonna film in the future. <laughs> uh, this vinyl is part of the release um, that is October 15th on Mormon O's website. And I definitely need more. I actually cut out <laughs> a matching peekaboo and a matching Tuesday tote with the same print and vinyl. Okay, so I just go down and clip my both sides and then I fold it over and I start clipping. This vinyl is so nice too because it isn't super thick. Um, I mean, I would maybe interface it if I was worried that it was like a single layer somewhere that was going to have a lot of stress. But, oh, this is so nice for... A double fold strap. If I were using cotton woven, I would put my clip on here and then unfold these and match them up and sew it together to make a continuous loop. But when I do vinyl straps, I don't do that. So I'm just going to sew down both sides. sewed all four sides. I'm going to trim this end because it has a little bit of fuzziness going on. And then I'm going to get my clip and I also grabbed the connector and the D-ring. Okay. Looks like my presser foot did leave. 
a little bit of marking, but it, I think it'll come out really easily. So I'm going to take my clip and I think I'm going to use, I'm going to rivet this. Yes, I'm going to put a rivet on this. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so I put the rivet on here. And then I have my D-ring. I'm pretty sure I had to delete the recording of this. Because I needed to go fix my card slots. Um, but I just took the vinyl, put some double-sided tape in the middle, folded it in, stitched the edges, and folded it over. Okay, so card slots. I, again, messed up and didn't put a line. My markings were so faint, like so faint, that I had to go fix them. Okay. I was having a really hard time. Uh, so I have an end that is longer. Um, the pattern, like you have the markings, they're in the pattern. You need the pattern to make this. Um, I believe you start at the top when you're folding, but I'm going to start at the bottom. So this longer piece is going to be the bottom of my card slots. I'm going to fold in and you want to make sure you're pinching at your marking on both sides making sure everything stays lined up nicely and then I'm not gonna iron if you're using all cotton you do need to iron then this next step they go right sides together you're basically just folding back and forth It might be easier if you lay it down on the table. Okay. And then right sides together. You do kind of have to look to see. So then I'm going to lay this like this to press that. Oh, get out of my way. I do apologize if I don't explain this that well. It's the first time I've recorded making card slots. <laughs> Hopefully the next time is better. Finding my mark. And you can use as many or as little clips as you need, but you want to have even, like everything, I don't know how hard it is to see, everything should be pretty darn even. Okay, so you want three little envelopes, that's how you know you put that together right. So I'm going to do the next one, again, I have my longer piece which is the bottom, and if I start on the bottom, I'm folding in wrong sides together. Da 
then we're going right sides together. Just back and forth. There's also a mini version of the NCW. I own the pattern. I own the templates. I haven't made it yet. <laughs> All right, so give it a look. If you want to press it, you can. Um, this is gonna seem a little weird too, but this is how I do the next part. I'm going to make sure I've got clips on my folds, a couple on each one, because I'm using the waterproof canvas and I'm not pressing it. Okay, and then I'm taking these clips and clipping the bottom folds together at the, the edges. So that they stay together. I promise there's a method to my madness. So now you kind of have like, they fold apart some. And you do want to go towards the, if you're if you're gonna do what I'm doing, you want to go towards the the bottom so there there's room for these to open up so that you can top stitch them. Okay, so they're together, but they're clipped kind of funny. I'm going to fold this piece out of the way so that I can top stitch this one. And you kind of want to fold everything out of the way. Again, you can iron it, and then you, you probably wouldn't need to do this, but if you've watched my other videos, too, I just really try to stay away from the iron. <laughs> I also need to get a new one. Mine just, it doesn't bring me joy. I need, like, a new cover for my ironing board and just a new iron. Okay, so I chain-stitched those together. Oh, I've also seen, I believe Lauren does this, um, you can do like a giant piece and then just cut it in half, um, but I've got the template, so I don't do that. Okay, now I'm folding everything on my way again, because you only want to catch this.
And then you're gonna do the final row. Okay, so now because we had the bottoms clipped together, it's so easy. They just like lay back down together. So I'm gonna clip everything together. You can baste the sides together. Um, I kind of do recommend that. I don't always baste things, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. And you only have to do where all the folds are. You don't have to go all the way down. Okay, so those are basted together. The next thing that needs to be done is these need trimmed down. So normally I would just rotary cut these off. You want them to be four and a half inches. Just to make sure that I am right. Okay, yes. Because, yes. Okay, four and a half it is. So you're gonna cut that off. My template pieces do make these longer, so um, if you don't have this much to cut off, you you didn't mess up. Okay, now you're going to want to sew these together. Make sure you have your pockets on this side and you're sewing this side. Also, when you're cutting, that's really important too. Hopefully, no one didn't check that because I didn't see it. <laughs> and then you're gonna sew them together. So, you should have your pockets on the outsides. We need to sew our center line. So, you should have, this should be eight inches wide. You're going to draw a line at four inches and um, draw it on the back unless you're sure whatever you're using is uh, going to come off. Uh, and I tend to turn this and make a second line just to make sure I'm really in the middle. 
because, yep, perfect. I'm going to sew from the back. And I'm going to back stitch at the start and stop. If you don't press this apart, so you don't want to stretch anything, you want to keep everything flat right here. Once you get past those, I like to open my seam and make sure it's really flat to go over that. And then once you get past that, you want to make sure everything's flat again. And you should have your centered card slot divider. Now you're going to take your other rectangle square. It's almost a square. You're going to line it up to everything. You're going to clip it together on the top and bottom. You don't need to clip the sides right now. And then you're going to sew both of these. Um, seam allowances are very important in this pattern because if you don't do the right seam allowance, everything won't fit together. So make sure you are following the pattern. So again, we're just sewing the top and the bottom. take and flip this right side out I like to do one of these little motions to stretch it out um you can press this if you're using a fabric that you need to press but I like to just make sure I stretch the edges and get those lined up first on both sides And then kind of just finger press the rest of this. You want to make sure that this is all straight and you don't have like a dip. You've got a lot of clips over here. Okay, now we're going to top stitch and baste these sides. So I just like to start at one of the sides. I also like to have that seam open if I can so that that's flat. on this side. There we go. Okay, so that is the card slot piece. We've got the card slot piece our pocket, our flap, connector, strap, and then all that's left is our exterior pieces and we just need to put our hardware on. So, the pattern piece has a square for where you're going to put the turn lock and we're going to change it a tiny bit so that there's a little bit more space when you have the wallet loaded up. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do, and again, you can use a magnet. Lots of people use magnets for this. That's fine. I 
I just personally like using the turn locks. I think they look nicer. Um, I like to use my cutting mat because it has the grid, but I pulled this ruler over here for the same purpose. Okay, I'm going to get out my screwdriver. I'm going to grab oh, one of my favorite things to use is my crocodile and these little scissors that came with my embroidery machine. So, weird, but yes, we're gonna set everything up with this. I am so sorry. I recorded putting the turn lock on the flap and it didn't record for some reason. Um, I took this part apart and then on the back I traced out this circle and the two holes for the screws and then I used my crocodile to poke holes. I used these little scissors to cut around until I made sure that everything would go together and then I screwed that together and then I took the D-ring and I put it right here and basted it on and trimmed the excess. So then I took my pattern piece and I marked out um, putting my logo on this side and then I marked the line from the pattern to put this piece of the turn lock on. Um, I am just looking up really quick a measurement because I always mess this one up. And I meant to do that while I wasn't on the camera but it is what it is. <laughs> okay, because I like to change the measurement. Okay, yes. So I'm going to go two inches down from the edge. I'm going to draw a line. And then this little marking is from the square that's cut out on the pattern piece. And it is a one and a half inch mark. So I'm going to find the center and transfer it up here to my line I'm using. Um, this is a, that is, okay. I was like, that's really long for this piece because that goes to that. Anyways, I'm gonna take my washer and look and see where I need to mark. So it looks like the middle mark on each. I'm gonna put the circle at my center point and make markings. I do like to use some Peltex scraps to put behind my washer to keep it in place. And I have started using duct tape for the backs um, to kind of um, help stabilize because I've had a couple, a couple of my nameplates have been ripped off of stuff which really stinks, but it is what it is. So I'm going to take and, oh, I'm still getting used to, this is like a different blade on here. Okay. So I have my two markings for my nameplate on this side. Oh, try not to cut such big marks. I think I need this blade does not work the greatest for some reason. Okay, I don't want to cut that too much. I'm going to put my nameplate. Here. Oh yeah, that hole was kind of big. Thankfully, it'll all be held together pretty well. And then 
on this side I'm going to put this part of the turn lock oh come on okay I didn't want to cut the hole too big and then kind of wound up not being big enough all right I'm gonna put my Peltec scrap and push down and then my washer okay. this turn lock is like the metal is really strong so to save my fingers Knowing me, I'll probably break this one day, but at least it's a small one. It costs less. <laughs> and then make sure that's really pushed on there good. Um, I would have folded it in, but this is really thick. And it would have really created much more thickness. It's already a little bulky. Okay, so now we've got these pieces, our exteriors. We need to put our flap onto here. Now, the pattern piece... Okay, so also, we're going to be putting our flap on the side that doesn't have the turn lock. Um, this actually fits in here, so if you take... I'm going to stand up because it's easier. Where did I put my pen? Got it. <laughs> All right. If you take and lay your pattern piece on here, you do have markings. So where these lines are, I'm going to make marks. And those should be eight inches apart. If you want to check yourself, you can. So we've got the right side of our exterior main piece. We're going to take the right side of our flap and put it together. So you should have your D ring and the wrong side of your um, closure up. And I'm going to center this in the middle of those markings. Now remember, no, you wouldn't remember because it didn't record. My flap is just shy of eight inches, so I'm just centering it and clipping it on. And then I'm gonna baste this on. Okay, so you should have this. If you fold this all together, you should be able to latch your lock in there and have the right side like this. So we're going to undo that because ours is right. And then you're going to take the lining piece. And remember, we cut this hole because we're going to turn everything through here. And we're going to match everything up and clip it all together. Sometimes I like to make the marks on all the pieces so I can match it all up perfectly. Um, it's more of an issue when I want to use a directional print for my exterior. And then I have the seam and I've heat pressed everything and sometimes things shrink a little. Um, but these should be spot on as long as I cut them right. So I think we're good. You do have some bulk here and here because of the lock. So keep that in mind if it seems like it's not completely fitting right. You just need to adjust it a little bit as you go.
the cut that you make to turn this way too also helps ease the the bulk a little bit so it isn't as hard to clip together Okay, I'm gonna start on the flap backstitch, so all the way around. And then with this bulk here, I kind of just, you know, I don't think you can see, but I'm kind of just tugging a little to pull it taut. Okay, make sure your D-ring is out of the way. I like to back stitch over it once or twice. Okay, so now you're gonna wanna check and make sure you caught everything and your curves are there. Looks good. I'm going to take my pinking shears and clip my curves. I'm not going to clip the straight sides though. Does anyone else's Netflix sit idle on their TV and then just randomly make that noise and go to the home screen? Like the who's watching screen? <laughs> Why is so random? I've been watching Supernatural. I tried watching it years ago. I scared myself. And I never... I was like, I just never watched it. And now I'm on season three. So, proud to say. I'm working on it. I wanted to watch it. I just... Yep. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to take... And through this opening... Pull the flap. Um, I didn't cut the opening as big as I could have. I try to make it as small as possible. You just don't want to rip it more. This vinyl probably creases, so I probably should have thought about that, but it's okay. I'm sure it could be worse. It's actually not too bad. It kind of looks cool. <laughs> okay. So I used vinyl and waterproof canvas. I can't press this, which is going to be a first for me. Okay, I've always pressed this. So I'm just going to take my fingers and really make sure that everything is sitting nicely. So another thing I used to do is at this point, I would take a piece of Peltex that is this size and I'd trim it down, make sure it fit, and I would put it inside of here. Um, it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, it does look nice, but we are not doing that today. The nice thing about this pattern too is like the more you have in it, which let's be honest, I'm sure everyone puts a bunch of stuff in their wallet if they can fit it, um, that kind of like bulks it up and um, gives it structure too. So even if it's slightly flimsy, empty, it's, it's going to change once you have it loaded up. Okay, so 
I'm going to make sure everything is real good. And I'm just going to put some clips in because I want to make sure everything stays nice. I'm going to finish clipping this and I'm going to change my needle. I want a fresh needle for the next couple of steps because I want to make sure that my top stitching while I finish this wallet it looks as best as it can. I guess I'm going to finish clipping first. Donut said, I'm here. He's like, can I be in the video? You were sleeping in the last one, bud. <laughs> Okay, oh, sitting on donut. So I'm going to top stitch around this. I just put a fresh needle in. I checked my bobbin. We are good to go. Um, I like to start in one of these four corners um, because it's going to show the least when it is all put together. Donut has been sleeping this whole time. Okay. Sometimes I feel like if you can top stitch with a cat in the way, you can do anything. Okay, my D-ring is right here. Also, I'm going to make sure that this is stretched out so that my flap looks nice. And if you need to, you can hand crank to go over that D-ring, which I am doing because I don't want any skipped stitches which hopefully I don't have any. I don't. And I definitely do take my time on this part because as you can see right there, when I started to get a little bit faster, I went off the edge just high bud. <laughs> you can't sit here right now. You sit there. He learned yesterday, I was doing a lot of computer work, that if I kept my hand right here, he could lay and use my arm as a headrest. Okay, so we have our flap, or our exterior is completely done. Now we've got this exterior, we've got our card slots, and we have our zipper pocket. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to line our card slots up as best as possible to be as straight as possible on everything with the same gap here and here. And once you feel confident, you're going to take this piece 
and fold it over. And you're gonna wanna clip that. Um, this part, you might have to adjust a couple of times. I am, I'm not gonna lie, you, you really might have to adjust it. Um, and we want this to be as straight as possible. So, that bumpy lock can kind of be a pain. You want to have this folded all the way so that when we stitch here, you're going to catch those card slots. It's really important. So, we've got this. Looks pretty straight, it looks pretty good. But we're going to fold this and take a look at what this is gonna look like. Now, keep in mind, this isn't like full, we don't have our zipper pocket in there yet, but do you see how this is sticking out here and it's not sticking out here? I don't like that. So, I'm going to take, I'm gonna unclip this and I'm gonna shift this just a teeny bit over, I know it's hard to tell, and fold that in more. And see how that bumped up? I'm gonna try to flatten it and just adjust this one a teeny bit. I'll fold it back up, see what it looks like. And you kinda just wanna, it is still sticking out a little bit. But this side looks good. Oh, well, you know what, actually, Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to unclip this, and I'm going to open this, and I'm just going to trim the tiniest bit off of here. I really like taking my time on this part because I feel like the better this spot looks, the better the whole wallet looks. Okay. So, I don't think we're going to get it perfect. But we're going to get as close as we can. I think it's also the vinyl. Ooh, okay. That looks good. So we're going to unclip this and once we're happy with it, I'm going to go to a five for my stitch length. We're going to stitch down both sides. Make sure you back stitch. Another part that really stinks to have skip stitches. The first couple NCWs I made on my domestic, I had no issue at all, and then I just couldn't get it to to stitch after that on these, and I was like, I really need an industrial. But I think I made my first eight NCWs on my domestic. So they're definitely capable. You just need to play around with your materials and your interfacing because it, it does have limits. Okay, so you're gonna want to make sure that you've completely caught your card slots. And then you're gonna open these flaps. I like to take a piece of double-sided tape Doesn't have to be the whole width. And where our seam is for our card slots, I'm going to put that down. And remember, I like to have the zippers on this side so that they open this way. And hopefully I don't get my head in the way. I'm going to take and line the seams up 
because this should be completely centered. And then I'm going to press down. And then you should have the same gap on the top and the bottom. Okay. Now, my favorite hack. <laughs> I take a piece of tear away embroidery stabilizer and I draw a one inch you don't have you don't even have to do a box just a one inch apart double line and I'm going to take that and I'm going to set it down and I can see it through it enough that I'm going to center it and I'm going to hold down and I'm going to slide this to get it under my presser foot and I'm going to go all the way to the edge. I'm going to back stitch over here and I'm going to make sure that this is straight. And I'm going to stitch until I get to my line or very close to it. I'm going to pivot. I'm going to flatten everything down as I go and make sure that I am centered. And then I'm going to stitch down my line. This is also a lot of layers too, so know what your machine can handle. And then I'm gonna get over here. I'm gonna stitch to my next line or very close to it. Sometimes I have to adjust just the teeniest bit. And then I'm gonna come back down on this line. Trim my strings. Look at that box. It looks so good. <laughs> So if you don't have the stabilizer, you can draw the line on your fabric, but I like doing this because then I don't have to worry about any lines. And then you just tear it away. You want to make sure you're using tear away stabilizer because if you use cut away, it's, it's not going to tear away. <laughs> there. Sometimes I like to just, if it's not straight now, it's not going to be straight. Oh, it's cute. Okay. And then, so your zipper pockets, I don't know what that's in there. So I did, they did catch, but even if they would not have, they are closed because the way we did them. So, I love it. All right. I'm going to move the zippers in just a tiny bit and I'm going to grab my pattern piece. I'm sure it's not the easiest to see. Um, with my template, but you just, you use your pattern piece. I like to take, Okay, good. You can see it. I like to take and line up the edge of my wallet to the edge of this line with an even gap. And then I just open the flap up flat. And I'm going to make a mark where the lines are. I'm going to rotate. Do the same thing. And 
and you won't be able to see this mark. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're done with this pattern piece. You're going to take and line up your zipper pocket piece to where you made your mark on there. And you're going to fold the flap around that and clip it. I like to do this with all of them. So again, this is my first time using vinyl my exterior. And that gives you a true idea of the wallet. Oh, it's so cute. Oh my gosh. I don't know why it's looking crooked to me. I think I might just need to play with it. Um, and then you can kind of see to make sure that this is all straight. You can adjust these a little bit if you need to, but I think mine are good. So I'm going to rivet these. The pattern has you sewing right here. I, that's too much to finagle for me. <laughs> so I have two cam presses. It is my personal preference. Um, I don't, I usually poke my holes for these with my, I think I still can. Okay. I don't need my hole punch one. I'm so used to getting it out. Okay. You can unclip these if you need to, if it makes it easier. Um, but you kind of just bend them out of the way and... If you're using a punch like this, you want to use the smaller hole. But I try to get mine about right here. Also, make sure nothing's going in here. I, ac I accidentally one time poked a hole in another part of a wallet. And there's, there's not much worse than finishing an entire wallet and then uh, poking a hole in it. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna put your rivet through there and you, you want to make sure you catch this layer, your zipper pocket, and this layer. Then I kind of just push that together and it's usually okay for now. Okay, oh, I lied. We're going to press it. So you bend everything out of the way. got the rivet on that one. Okay. Get everything out of my way again. You want to go as close to the same spot as you can. You can try to get up higher, but going through all those layers is not easy. Okay, so one side down. So you can see the bulk right here. That's the zipper tab. You want to make sure it's not getting like distorted. So make sure you're pinching this really, really well so nothing's moving. And then you also kind of want to flatten it so you can get in there. It is a lot of layers. I'm also using 10 millimeter rivets right now. I don't normally use them, but with the vinyl, thought it would be a better idea and I, I think it was a good idea. Alright, 
one more. And then we are done. You could use Chicago screws here too. I've actually never used them, but I know that people do use them on here. Yay! All right, so I'm gonna zip these back, fold it in, grab our wrist strap, clip it on there, and it's done! I do think it's, no, I think it is good. It's just sometimes when it hasn't been formed yet, it's a little, oh my gosh, it is cute. So, this vinyl is amazing. So pretty. I love using the black for the card slots and the inside because it really draws your attention to the print only on the flap and the zipper pockets. So yep, we've got zipper pockets with our lining. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, again, let me know if you make one and if you have any tips or tricks, let me know. I'd love to know. Thank you so much and have a great day.